difference is sometimes used by people who hate. Hate crime is a, a dreadful offence and something we take really seriously. Sometimes the message of hate crime is a bit confusing, isn't it? You know, These things are happening, unfortunately, every day. We've had a series of assaults, robberies, sometimes because some of our, our children are different, purely because the way they've looked. My view is that housing is at the heart of things. It was an important staging post to see how um, we can raise awareness and bring different partners together to pledge their commitment to hate crime. And you can see and you can feel actually you know that the young people were taking the message on board. The story of, that Sylvia brings is very powerful. When people see our resources and see the work that we do, it is slightly um, different, I think, to, to the norm. Hate crime really gets to the soul sometimes of, and, and uh, to the heart of communities and we, we should never tolerate it in whatever guise it comes about. It opens a box really for, for people to work on issue of hate crime and although we focus on alternative subcultures it isn't just about that the other five strands of hate crime are covered and we'll give them a tool to be able to use in their schools and um, to pass that message on Sophie's story is so powerful it's so tragic uh, but it, it just gives you that resolve to actually say you know I, I knew anywhere I was never going to tolerate this type of crime but it gives you that extra vigor if you like that we, and determination that we really do need to work together with communities, with young people, with a whole range of um, agencies to tackle this head on and not be afraid to say when things aren't right. Our resource that you will be using in schools is, is really professional, it's set to norm, it gets our message there um, and I think it's easy to use as well so hopefully that's what will happen, it will become embedded um, into the curriculum, that's what we'd like to see. So that every school, every year at least, um, are using that resource. Uh, and some of us have known the story through the news reporting from years ago, seven or eight years ago, but this really brought it to life. It's such a harrowing story to hear from the mother's own words. I mean, a positive, you know, is that that young people are, are taking it forward. It's really made them think about their behaviour. We live, as you know, uh, as a college in the centre of a very difficult, challenging part of the city. And I think in Derby, you, you will take that forward. And um, more and more young people will come on board, and that's what we want. I'm particularly proud that as a culmination of last week's events, Derbyshire Constabulary accepted that they would start recording alternative subculture under their hate crime. Something that we take really seriously now is subcultures, alternative subcultures. So basically children or young people being themselves and expressing themselves. That should not form any part of hate crime and we take that really seriously. We are one of a few forces that are going to start recording uh, those offences. So when we can see uh, th those types of hate crimes coming in, aimed at young people just basically growing up and expressing themselves, we can do something positive about that. Obviously, Derby Police yesterday um, announced that they would start monitoring alternative hate crime. We'll soon be able to talk numbers, talk figures and educate young people to value everyone. So we're now up to 13 forces. I want to use that information to see how and what we need to commission to continue the work and uh, actually across the whole of Derbyshire. We're trying to get the whole of the East Midlands and then you will be
the first um, area uh, to have all, all police forces to have gone, so that would be quite interesting. Really, it was major awareness for a lot of us, including ourselves really, about the five strands of hate crime and the difference between hate crime incidents and hate crime itself. What I would like you to do, Bill, is get all those good people that you talked about together um, and let's work together and get Lincolnshire on board and Northamptonshire on board and then you will be the first of the regions as a whole to go with um, alternative subcultures. How good would that be, Bill? Last week, though, was really the start of much, much wider networking and developing the whole commitment across the county. We hope that this isn't going to be uh, the end of our involvement with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Let's join forces, join together, and we can stand together, actually. Get that message out there and, um, and be as one. The most important thing now, though, is, is what we do next. It's also about that community and building on, on a community. We can't tackle this alone. And we work with a number of key partner agencies and also members of the community to tackle it. Let's be really honest, you know, there are lots of good people out there. In fact, there's more good people than there are bad. The key for me is let's take the emotion that we all harness during the week and turn that into actions now. We have already revised our bullying policy to include issues around hate crime. We need to work with people in, inf in positions of influence and through that we will make a difference and it will just become mainstream like much of the rest of the work we do. I met Maria um, a couple of years ago actually and she promised then that she would um, take her message forward into Derby and um, she's done that. Okay so let's talk about advice and, and what we can do going forward. Um, first thing is, um, is to get an accurate reporting mechanism for hate crime. Hate crime is hugely underreported. We know that from many, many surveys that have been conducted. So whether you are part of the LGBT community or whether you're from a um, particular um, community uh, that is, is new to the UK, we know that hate crime is underreported. What we have to do jointly is to make sure that our educational messages are, are strong and clear, that hate crime should never be tolerated, that if you're a victim of hate crime, report it, report it to the police, or through third party agencies that are set up to receive that information. That's the clear message that we have to get out there, we have to start understanding the problem of hate crime more. So not just statistically, but actually understand some of those root causes, and that way we can tackle them, both preventative and also making sure that we pursue offenders that are involved in that type of criminal activity.